uh, Minister for Education, the Honorable Lucas Gawa, uh, Brother Namneva uh, Blokerwagi, Honorable Francis Kikin, Secretary Dr. Uke Kombra, and all of you in the Educational Department, Education Department, Brother, uh, Special Combinations to all teachers. Thank you for care of the principal who prayed earlier tonight. And all who served in these, our schools last year to have produced our children here uh, sitting in the second uh, class of beds who will go to study in the US. So I want to acknowledge every one of you, parents and uh, citizens who are here in media, lastly but not least to our children who are privileged now to be uh, to ready to set sail for the study in the USA. I want to appreciate your presence and I look forward to the success of this program. In 2009, when I arrived into national leadership as Minister for Education, in fact, 2008, rather, and the problem that confounded us was me. We had many good students, but we had a bottleneck up at the top. There was only limited space beyond way talk into universities. In fact, in 2008 and 9 thereabouts, there was only about four to five, six thousand spaces at UPNG, Unitech, Divine Wood, PAU, and Tate, and some uh, polytech institutions. So, uh, realizing the need that faced us, uh, we went to work and, and also the need, because of the need that law education must produce quality students, uh, we made a diagnostic into what needed to be done. And part of that was for us to reform the law education. And uh, for me, someone who believes in education because my father, as illiterate as he was, he believed in the very systems that education and most of Christian-based education system can give. Uh, I too grow and see the fruits of education. He very well that our children, if properly anchored in education, can become better citizens, and of course, PNG will be a better country. And so in 2009, we went to work. We put into place certain policy interventions, one of which was the School of Excellence. School of Excellence, and I want to uh, indicate that it has start, stop, start, stop along the way. Uh, but right now, for me as the author of the School of Excellence concept, I got no other boss to report to, so Minister, uh, you are certainly in a good place for us to really make the School of Excellence concept work in our country. So the School of Excellence was introduced uh, elevated hybrid of what used to be our school of national, uh, national high schools. For those of you who come from a national high school concept, the Caravans, the Iowas, the, the Sogaris and Passams, in the 80s when I was coming to school, I was fortunate to be in a, the only fifth school that offered grade 11 and 12, and that was Kabifa. And so we sort of elevated the school of uh, the national high schools into, into a specific focused program but the best of grade 10 will be funneled into. And uh, of course, I want to appreciate Port Mosby National High School. Mr. I saw Mr. D.O.I. somewhere here. I'm uh, still here, forever looking down. Uh, uh, they say the numbers that add on every year is just numbers. You know, you know, what's in their mind is more important. So Mr. D.O.I. is here, and uh, of course, Wawi. So we anchored our focus on making sure the best of grade 10s uh, funnel into these schools so that the best of grade 12s could be picked up for our domestic universities as well as possibility of really sending them out to the best schools in the world so that they could come back or work outside at least publicly and especially in the in, in as far as the IQ space is concerned and for them to be out there in the world. I'm happy this policy has matured to a stage where we now see the second batch, and I want to step back and thank you. Those of you who have engaged in the curriculum step up, and more so Dr. Clement Wayne. There have been many public leaders out there who do little work and expect the state to pay big money. Dr. Clement Wayne has not yet given an invoice 
to the state. His recurrent expenditures get to be, pay, get to be uh, uh, paid, but he has never claimed into the millions many corn company in the Excuse me if I could use this word. The many corn around in the country. They work little and expect big from the state. They work little and expect big from the state. And uh, I want to say thank you very much. The current, uh, Dr. Wayne and your team, the current STEM curriculum we have is compatible with the best in the world. Since when have you ever had Australia picking up something that we created in our country? And not just ordinary creation making a biscuit. Anyone can make a biscuit. Anyone can make a bun. Anyone can sew a clothes. But I'm talking about grade 11 and grade 12 maths, science, engineering, subjects curriculum that they have embraced that we have stepped up to the right direction in fact compatible our best curriculum we have tenant and they have now asked that those curriculum be also a part of australian curriculum and so that just indicates that we are doing something right in the education department we're doing something right and i'll be the first to admit that many many work that still is outstanding for us to do but I want to encourage everyone over here tonight. We have not been wasting time sitting on WhatsApps and contesting. We've been doing work in the last four, five, six years. In fact, the education department has been really carrying the load for the last 20 or 30 years since the, the reform in education was lumped into the education department without matching the resource allocation to the department. You know the education reform, when was it, Dr. Comran? 1995? 1991 reform. Thrown in, you were supposed to do three years of elementary, and then you do four years of, uh, six years of primary, four years of uh, hybrids, high school, secondary, school of, school of, uh, of national high school. It was a little bit all over the place. And uh, we came in in 2009, 2008, and we looked at the weakness we were carrying in the education system that had a uh, rough on negative impact to our society because the graduates from grade 12 were not with the right competency to enter our universities or even global schools. So having seen this, we tied it, and something is happening right in the education department. We have a minister now who's a, who's a pro teacher. To the teachers who are here, you are ministers of the teacher. You have been trying to do some things in time on cabinet now. Around the rounds of all our teachers. In fact, he and me have discussed that to make this one happen, to ensure our children are fed correctly in as far as the academia inputs are concerned, or even the character nurturing, we must make sure teachers are trained well and look after well. And so we are studying into how we could train you better for all teachers, but not just train you, pay you better going forward. You know, uh, one of the policy inputs that I made in 2009 was that all of you teachers would be paid on qualification and not in your positions of uh, instruction. If you're teaching at elementary or now the uh, grade one, grade two, or you're a master's degree holder, but you have to be paid as a master's degree holder. So we do this and I think that we must make you come to work that you are paid based on your qualifications and not based on positions. But uh, I look forward, Minister is here to assist all our teachers for in as far as your work condition is concerned. For the moment, tonight I just want to appreciate those who are going. The curriculum is competent. You're going today. Last year's report was that of the 42 who uh, went to those universities, 20 got President's Award. And you don't just get President's Award, uh, you get award when you use your GPA, you're scoring about 90% or 95% in my view. So, well done to the best that went last year. You know, the second best went to do the same. And so we're looking forward to your success. We will stand with you every step of the way. I want to encourage the education department next year's budget, uh, bid and make sure we're not scrambling for cover. Uh, I will keep a lookout in the final budgets as we present them. 
the continuous support for this one, just like we support uh, Hackers, Tessas, High Education Loan Program, uh, support for students who are going outside. Uh, it's always put in budget next year going forward. Let's put a vote item for this, uh, this problem. Is that all right? So we decided on beginning to be one of the best schools in the world. And all can come back. They all can work outside, no problem. And business move on, I got us on. All can, all can decide. If we work outside too, we're good. Probably beginning work outside. And you know, I'm working with US government, I'm working with Australian government, I'm working with New Zealand government, telling them that I am sending my kids to your country to study. Please pick them up for work also outside. Pick them up for work also outside. And this, uh, this program will open up into the future, so I'll come to you children in a minute. And I want to encourage the education department. Don't think we're feeling this for a moment and to make James Marabe feel good. This must be part of our government today and government into the future. The best of PNC children must be picked and sent to the best school in the world. So they become the best in whatever potential God has given them. And they come back or they work outside, that's not matter. They have at least been trained to serve in whatever fields they get their training. To our students, you are not an accident. And I want to firstly encourage you that never leave your God. Never leave your God. You cannot take you the world. The world is a big trap even for Satan to try to get you off the path that God has ordained for you. Tonight I want you to read Psalm 139. And you read at verse 13. I'm not a pastor. But as your father, I'm entitled to give you guidance and counsel. Read verse 13. Verse 13 says, You were knitted in your mother's womb under God's supervision. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You were made by God yourself. Verse 14, God tells us that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. But if you read earlier, it says when you were constructed or made or formed in the mother's womb, 18 years ago, 19 years ago maybe, 17 years ago maybe, 20 years ago maybe, when even your father or mother never knew the form you would be born into, God alone knew the formation taking place in the mother's womb. And so you have been a place that your country comes to you, you now. You will become leaders of PNG in the tomorrows. Get out there, embrace the opportunity education gives you and you become the woman and the man you must be. I want you to embrace this opportunity with both hands. Abstain from alcohol. Abstain from cigarette. Abstain from drugs. Abstain from party, abstain from all the rubbish, and don't get distracted. At least give me the next 10 years of your life in this lifestyle. Is that okay? I'm here tonight to have an agreement with you. As you go and study, as your number one was Papa, I want you the next 10 years no smoke, no alcohol, no drugs, no women and no men. Just focus in education and trust me. Come into the 20th, come when you are 30s, and you will see what this journey has placed you. You will be women and men. That your country is proud of, and your family is proud of, and you yourself will be proud that you arrived at the stage where you are a productive person in society. And I want to also say, dear God, we will truly be happy that you become the boy or girl or man or woman you must be. I want to leave with this, uh, I studied this when I was on my way to this problem here. The whole out there will be in sense of this type of people. As we go forward into the future, let me pick it up from my notes. Apart from 
out of fields and even want to study. In places like USA, Dr. Clement Miner will tell you, they head hunt. And we're not making this extending to USA. They hunt, head hunt for the very best. The very best is not hired that because you are wanted to someone. The very best is hired that by your academic excellence. And I want you never to doubt yourself. You are equally gifted, just like the next person you're sitting class with in your, in your, in your university. Into the immediate future and long-term future, the world will be looking for those who know artificial intelligence and study of machine and study of robots, robotic science, data science and analytics, cyber security, renewable energy, healthcare, biotechnology, quantum computing, environmental science and conservations, advanced materials and study of manufacturing and innovations, autonomous systems and robotic studies, space and astronomy will be some of the some of the areas the world will be in sense of people who know this. Of course, your country needs doctors, and we want you to be doctors. Your country needs pilots, and we want you to be pilots. Your country needs the common engineers, and we want you to be those engineers. But also, sit down, read, open your horizons. Find out what the world needs into the future. If your brain can lead you into those areas of interest, pursue them. And don't come back to PNG, work outside, make us proud. Is that okay? You will say it's a place of opportunity. And we will find opportunity for all our students that you've left behind in country as well as in other areas that we are sending them to study. China, Japan, India. I want to ask the education department, find me 2,000 students who have left great talk in the last one or two years. I have 2,000 spaces secured to study in universities in Indonesia. So just find me 2,000 students we can send them. And so I want to conclude to my children, you are a God, you are God gift to your parents, to your country, and to humanity. Study hard, work hard, be the woman or be the man God has meant you to be. Embrace discipline, embrace study, and you will surely get there. Thank you very much.